This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So let's go through and have a look at another accounting standard. You're probably sick of them by now. I apologise. There are quite a lot. But again, this is another small one. So you may get one, two questions on it within the exam. So it's a pretty straightforward one because I think ultimately what happens is you just learn what are the adjusting, what are the non-adjusting events and apply it within an exam question. So again, it's more about knowledge, I suppose, here than, than application, which is good. Because if you've got the knowledge, if you haven't, disaster isn't it so it's all about is10 events after reporting period uh, so essentially what we're going through and doing there is we're looking at, at an accounting year end so let's just say that uh, that we have is it our reporting date so let's just say that that's the the 31st of december x5 and we're looking at what happens in between that reporting date and let's just say i don't know the first of march shall we say x6 and that is when the financial statements are authorized for issue Okay, so they're signed off by the directors and everything is complete. Okay, we need to look at what happens in between there. So December X5 and the 1st of March X6 to see whether or not there's something that happens that means that we will go back and have an event that was an adjusting event. So with an adjusting event, we need to go back to the reporting date and adjust because the information that we receive in that post reporting period gives us extra information about a condition that existed. OK, that's the key bit. Did the condition exist? OK, and then what we have there is there might be something that happens in that post reporting period that gives rise to a non adjusting event whereby something happens. But the, the happening of the event doesn't give us any more information about a condition that existed. So the condition did not exist, essentially, at the SFP date. OK, therefore, we do not adjust. OK, sounds relatively straightforward. So, so what do we mean by adjusting and non-adjusting? I think we've already spoken about that, haven't we? The key bit about adjusting is that the condition existed. OK. So things that you've got there, settlement of an outstanding court case. So it could be that at the end of the year you were being sued. You don't know the outcome of the court case, but something happened just before the financial statements are signed off that gives evidence that you're going to lose the court case. The case was in place at the end of the year, so therefore that proves that you were going to lose it. So you will record that loss. You will provide for the settlement at the end of the year. Okay. Uh, likewise, the bankruptcy of a customer. If a customer goes bankrupt after the reporting date, that's giving evidence that that customer was in financial difficulty at the end of the year. So we should therefore write off that debt. Uh, if you sell inventory at below cost, that inventory existed, didn't it, at the end of the year? You made an estimate to value at the lower of cost and NRV. If you've gone with the lower being cost, and then ultimately you sell it at below cost in that post reporting period. That is giving you evidence of the condition of the inventory at that reporting date, isn't it? So you would therefore reduce the value of your closing inventory in the financial statements. Uh, likewise, as well, uh, you've sold an item of PPE at the end of the year. You haven't yet determined the price. There are negotiations in place. Uh, you reach a conclusion. And therefore, you can record a profit or loss on disposal. OK, if not, uh, then you could not record that profit or loss on disposal until you determine the selling price. OK, uh, non-adjusting uh, examples that you've got there. You know, that's essentially the condition didn't exist at the reporting period. So nothing was happening. So the fall in the value of an investment, if it happens after the reporting date, don't go back and adjust your financial statements. The reason being there is because whatever caused the share price to fall wasn't happening at the end of the year. It's happened afterwards, hasn't it? So don't adjust the value of your shares. If you decide to go through and make a major purchase of assets, again, 
We just decided to buy the assets after the end of the year. We, we hadn't made the decision at the reporting date. Uh, if we would have, we'd have gone through and bought those assets. It's not until afterwards that we've made the decision. So the condition did not exist. Uh, if you announce a discontinued operation, again, it's only when you announce the discontinued operation. Again, you see this in F2 is that that gives you the obligation. So at the end of the year, there was no obligation created. So there was no condition. So therefore, it's only when you announce it that the obligation arises and the obligation has arisen after the reporting date. So no adjustment there. And similar discontinued operation, a restructuring. Again, there's no obligation to restructure until you actually announce it. So don't go through there and make any adjustments. Uh, therefore, uh, you just have a non-adjusting event. The obligation rose after the reporting date. The condition did not exist at the reporting date. Points to note, uh, if any of those non-adjusting events are material, uh, so they are very large, uh, then you will go through there and disclose uh, the nature and the financial effects. Okay, Don't adjust the numbers in the accounts. You just make a disclosure note within the financial statements. Okay. There we go. As I said, uh, that's not a comprehensive list. That's a list of a good few of them. You can add to them. Have a look at the questions in the question bank. Go through as well and look at the study text of whatever tuition provider you are using and begin to create your own list of what is an adjusting, what is a non-adjusting event. If it's in the exam and you find something that wasn't on your list, shouldn't happen. But just think about whether or not the condition existed or did not exist at the end of the year. OK, uh, so let's go through, have a look at the example. I think it might throw in an extra one to add to the list as we go along. But that's just to help you along. Uh, it says explain how each of the above items should be treated in the financial statement for December X5. So essentially, is it an adjusting or non-adjusting event? So it says the following events took place between December X5 reporting date and the date the financial statements were authorised for issue. Uh, first one. Uh, so after the end of the year, we issued 100,000 shares. We raised 200,000 shortly after the statement of financial position date. Well, uh, where, when did we issue the shares? After the year end. Had we issued the shares at the year end? No. OK, so there's no need to go back there and adjust. So that there is a non-adjusting event. OK, yeah, it's not until the shares have been issued that you will record them and they weren't recorded or issued until after the reporting date. So don't go back and adjust it. If you think 200,000 is material, then disclose it. OK, if you want to be really clever and it's more of a, a, an F2 point is that you would update your earnings per share figure for the 100,000 shares, but that's way off syllabus. OK, so I apologise there. Uh, other bits that you've got in number two. So we've dealt with number one. Uh, legal action has been brought against the company for breach of contract prior to the year end. So the legal action is in place at the reporting date. The outcome was decided shortly after the statement of financial position date. And as a result, we will have to pay costs and damages totaling $80,000. So it is giving us evidence of a condition, the court case that existed at the reporting date. So therefore, that will be an adjusting event, won't it? So that was on the list, wasn't it? Uh, but the non-adjusting event wasn't. And here we would need to go through there and make a provision. They've not made a provision we would need to provide. So accrue for that $80,000. OK, uh, number three, it says the inventory included in the account at a year end cost of 25,000 was subsequently sold for 15. So we held it in the account at 25. It's now been sold at below cost. So the inventory was held at the end of the year. We're now getting information about the inventory at the end of the year that it is worth less than what we thought. So that there is an adjusting event. OK, so technically what you would need to do there is you would need to reduce the value of your inventory. Is it by, I think, the $10,000, isn't it? OK, yeah, 25000 to fifteen. Uh, number four, 
Uh, it says a building in use at the statement of financial position, date and valued at 500 was completely destroyed by a fire. OK, uh, so if you have a fire, that fire did not take place at the reporting date. It took place afterwards, didn't it? Likewise, if there was a flood. OK, so here, fire, flood that occurs after the reporting date. That is non-adjusting, isn't it? OK, uh, unfortunately, only half the value is covered by insurance. The insurance company has agreed to pay 250000 in accordance with the company's policy. Don't do anything about the insurance, the receipt that we're going to get. Don't do anything about the value of the building and reduce it at the reporting date. Leave it in there at 500000 However, I think that is quite material, isn't it? The fact that your building has been destroyed. It was worth five hundred. It's now worth nothing at all. We are going to get 250,000 back. So I would go through there and disclose the, the nature. So exactly what happened. There was a fire and the financial effect. The building is now worth zero. And we are going to receive 250,000 from the insurance company in compensation. No debits, no credits, because it is a non-adjusting event. OK, so what you could do is if you have an issue of shares, that's non-adjusting. If you have a fire or flood, that is non-adjusting. And I think if you scroll back up to the non-adjusting events, they are not included deliberately so that you can then add that to your list. OK, uh, there are more comprehensive lists out there. You can find them if you so wish. What you have up there right at the very top should be more than enough to help you through okay practice the questions and after a while you are looking for a question on events after the reporting period to appear within the exam because it should be pretty straightforward stuff